Hey guys, this is Josh and Carolyn with Homesteading Family and welcome to this week's episode of the Pantry Chat Food for Thought. This week we are talking about prepping the house and the homestead for baby because that is coming ready or not. Baby is a small package, but it adds a lot to the homestead. It does. And uh, there's definitely some things to think about there and can be a challenge for some people. So, so I'm sure everybody will be excited to hear your thoughts and just what you have done. And, and uh... Well, and I've got to tell you guys, I'm still here <laughs> when you're seeing this, but it may be that actually in real time when you're watching this when this releases mm, yeah. baby may already be here so any video that you see from me for the next like two months where i actually show up is pre-recorded i'm just telling you guys that right now because i am taking a few months probably off of filming Yeesh. totally Good. and just taking it easy hanging out with baby recovering all of those things so you will still see me pop up because i have been pre-filming some things but just so you guys can know you're going to be stuck with me you're going to be stuck with him <laughs> we, got we got some good stuff we lots do. of stuff outside so yeah. right now as of the filming of this we're a couple weeks before the expected due date but it's coming fast and it's coming fast. i can show everybody always you're wants to see the bit see I, can we see that okay babies in there you can rub yeah rubbing <laughs> the belly right <laughs> this is a very very active baby right here so um so yeah anyway so you can see Baby's not here yet. Got a couple weeks. Yeah, but he's and you're coming. doing good. You're still bright and smiling. I know you're feeling it. Yeah, and you're sure handling things well. Thank That's, you. I'm a little so. <laughs> I feel big and slow at this point, but but you know, life goes on, and when you have an active household, active homestead. There's only so many ways that life slows down. Mm. It changes as you have more and more children. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. And there's, you have a lot more help in a lot of ways, definitely. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot more dynamics and some, a lot more speed, I think, at times, just with more people, more stuff yes. happening faster. So it's, uh, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's sometimes the days are, we like to say, dynamic in the house because there's a lot of people going a lot of directions and a lot of things that happen that, that, that that's kind of have funny to respond to. Yeah, and since we're just kind of rolling with a little more organic form here <laughs> in the beginning of this a little off format um we breakfasts are our family time so our, right. our i mean we have dinners as a family most of the time but like breakfast is our this is where we really meet as a family we have our bible time we talk about what's going on and yeah, and Carolyn often would say, okay, at a certain point, all right, it's going to, on a Monday morning, all right, it's going to be a busy week. <laughs> and all the kids just kind of look at us like, <laughs> it's always a busy it's week. It's always, a, when is it not? So, One of the kids asked the other day, so mama, is it going to be a busy week? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> having to come up with other adjectives. We are, we are. We're, we're working on dynamic now. Lots That's right. Of dynamics. That's and, right. Uh, yeah, so. Well, yes. it's a dynamic week as usual. Um, what are you up to? Oh, what am I up to? I am trying to keep my own pieces together, really. You know how... Uh, as we get this close to baby, there's a lot of nesting to be done. And I may have said this last time, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, but the thing that I'm realizing, cause I felt like, gosh, I, I'm like super nesting. I've never felt this nesty before that I can remember. You may disagree, but what I realized is we've never had a baby in this house. So I don't have a set location sure. for a crib. I don't, ha I don't even well, have a crib anymore because we moved that off on some move at some point. Just, I think it was starting to fall apart and we kind of said, eh, I think it's time to move on. If we need another crib, we're gonna have to get a new one. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are not just like, okay, set up the crib. It goes where it always goes and the furniture shifts how it always shifts and things like that. There's been a lot of, uh, fresh decision making. Moving the be couch made. around to here, to there, to over there, to you know, no, never mind. Put it back, back where here. it was in the first place. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so add that to the sense that I have that I am, I am making room for myself to have a break and a real recovery yeah. period. 
Um, and you have to be really intentional about that. I think in any form of modern life, you have to like, I am recovering. This is a, you know, appointment on my calendar for six weeks. Therefore, everything else needs to kind of move. It, it's kind of, you have to prep for it. So I'm having to get things done, get things ahead, make sure they're in a place where it's really easy for kids to handle a project by themselves with minimal direction. Um, for example, our seed starting program is, mm. you know, usually I would be there kind of moment by my moment. Today we're starting these seeds inside and they're gonna be ready to go out in so many weeks and you know, that sort of a thing. I am, um, instead, I've gotten a whole calendar and I'm calendaring out exactly how many of exactly what variety of exactly what plants need to be started on what date. Hey, I think that's advice that we've given to do before. I, I think it is. <laughs> We're actually doing it. And the amazing thing is, is it's going on a calendar so I can just transfer it to next year. So I'm really excited because in some ways this is helping to push us to actually be a little more organized, and There's I think we're going to be able to, to carry dial it that in out. a little bit better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, and you know what? The part of the nesting, the benefit is um, that this wasn't all part of your nesting, but I think it was um, moving the seed starting area that was in the kitchen, which was mm -hmm. originally, which originally, if I can say <laughs> that right was set in a spot that was easily accessible mm -hmm. and not too far from the wood burning stove to to create a little warmth mm -hmm. and i think we actually realized it was too warm it was and causing some legginess I it think, was and that was part of, of our struggle with the seedlings so just a little tip for you in case you're struggling with that that was something for a few years we're like man everything is just we're adjusting the lights we're you know doing little larger containers to, to help with the root development and still these things are getting too tall too fast yeah and we actually realized we probably were starting them too early for some varieties, even in our environment. But yeah. but that was a nice move. I think we're going to see a lot better results this year getting that further away from the wood burning stove. It's the kitchen also looks much less cluttered, which just totally goes right along with my nesting thing going on, like, like clean, clear surfaces. <laughs> I love less clutter. <laughs> it's really nice. It's, it's been a good move, I think, for that. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's kind of been a lot of what I've been doing is just like organization stuff, pantry organization. We've been doing the pantry challenge inside the um, Homestead Kitchen membership. membership. Yeah. Lots of people in there filling their pantries. But one of the steps of that is, um, you know, was really organizing the pantry and cleaning it out, getting all those old things that you haven't used in a really long time. You know, that kind of, oh, what do I do with that now that I made it and I stashed it there sort yeah. of stuff, trying to get that either moved on or used or something um, and cleaning that. So just a lot of that sort of stuff going on in the background. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of been me. Sure is. That's, uh, that's been enough for me lately. That's <laughs> yeah, plenty. You so get, getting ready to be able to slow down. Yeah. What about you? Moving furniture. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I got a nice long list of honeydews. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's been good. I enjoy uh, the moments where we get to declutter a little bit. Yeah. I'm happy to help out there. And we do have a crib, just so you know. We got that oh, worked out. Oh, we do. Yeah. We do now. Did I say we didn't? You have did. It? Yeah. I said oh, we didn't have a crib. Right. But we do. But so we, we fixed it. So that. we have gotten that worked out. <laughs> We've gotten the furniture moved around, right. pieces into place. And you guys are so nice. We'd probably end up with like three or four well, cribs that's what arrive made at me, our front that's door. That's what made me wonder the way that, uh, <laughs> that went off. Was Don't send us a crib. We've got it covered. Crib. Thank we, you. We did get that, that filled in, created a spot for it. Found the right place for everything and, and got it going. So, um, no, you know, really it's a lot of getting ready for spring here. It's it's um, February. I'm not sure when they're going to see this, but I assume this month um, it's February. It, this will come out the very beginning of March. Okay. So, anyway, since, since the gig is up and you know this is filmed quite <laughs> early <laughs> right now, um, it's February and actually doing a lot of the planning. We've been working together on planning the garden. Actually, I'm just remembering you're waiting for me on a sketch for what we decided to do. So we've got some visuals, ordering seeds, you guys, you, you gotta be ordering seeds and then chickens, getting our game plan on that, which one of our kids is 
started a little micro business that's growing so we're actually like tripling the chicken production on his end uh for for sales local for meat for meat chickens, chickens for yeah. local sales we're actually getting ready to increase our hens as well our egg layers that doesn't come till the fall but so a lot of planning on that level and um just a key tip here you kind of alluded to it but when we went to put that order in for oh, the meat right. chickens there are ready completely filled out until mid-may where we were ordering um, so it might, that just means they're selling fast this year. They're pre-selling a lot of it. chickens. If you have not ordered chickens and you're expecting to raise them this year, you really want to do that right now. Well, and if you're watching the news and seeing what's going on, then you might want to think about raising chickens if you're not yet and adding to your egg layers and come up with some plans. Just yeah. Uh, these kinds of things, I mean, you know, they're, they're going to ebb and flow, but I think they're going to ebb and flow upward as far as challenge, increasing challenge. And so just want to encourage you guys to continue building your systems um, and uh, building skills and uh, adding that to. You know, it's really exciting. This is kind of a rabbit trail, but when we, you know, we've gotten to a place where even right through the winter here in North Idaho, we either have preserved eggs or we have fresh eggs yeah. all winter. So we are not buying eggs at any point during the year. And so people started talking about the egg prices and I had to go when I was in the grocery store. Yes, we do go to the grocery store. We buy things year round at the grocery store. So we're not at a point where we're producing everything that we need. But when I was at the grocery store, I actually had to go over to the egg section and go look and see what the prices were. And I was surprised by the prices. And here we're still getting too many eggs in from the chicken we're like yeah. you know figuring out well what, what do we do with these eggs and can we eat more eggs and it just becomes this amazing blessing when you are growing your own and the cycle doesn't change very much yeah. you know it, the feed prices yes they've gone up a little bit but not in comparison to the egg prices at the grocery store and it's like, I'm still giving away eggs when people come over and visit. I'm like, take some eggs with yeah. you because I've got too many. So it just, it really changes the equation when you're growing your own food. Yeah, and it's yeah. in a very nice sort of way. Well, and that's the goal. It's the goal for us. And it's the goal we want to share with you guys is building resilience. Mm -hmm. And I've got a lot of permaculture in my mind because I was just hanging out with Nicholas Bertner filming a homestead design class. Uh, through He's the permaculture from lens, from the from school, school of, of per per permaculture. Yeah, I can't remember <laughs> from what the school, school of permaculture, and he's doing a class for us, kind of boiling down permaculture into homestead design. Because if you take a full permaculture PDC on that, that's lengthy and it's big. So we're trying to make something and accessible and help you guys approach homestead design and layout, whether it's new property or existing, with design elements that are going to save you time and money and energy over the long term. So. Um, anyways, all that to say, that thought just went out the window to be candid with you. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say. So one of us has pregnancy brain. <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> That's my excuse. Uh, um, I think we were talking well, about resiliency. Well, oh, a resiliency and yeah. part of resiliency, what I was coming around to with permaculture in my brain is one of the ethics of permaculture is taking care of the land, taking care of people, and surplus, extra. And that's what Carolyn is alluding to, that our homesteading um, ventures, the things that we're doing, while we want to build personal family resilience, we're building community resilience, and it's cool to get to some of the places in these systems where there is surplus that we can then give away or sell, or ideally both, honestly, in the long mm -hmm. run, in different places. And it doesn't mean you have to make a living from it. Some people are going to do that. That's great. But you're already doing a lot of the energy. So if you can create surplus, then you're, you're building a deeper resiliency for yourself and others. So... There you go. That's my little rant. Absolutely. Well, it's a good thing. And, and you feel it in these moments where, you know, shelves are kind of empty in some places at the grocery store. Yeah. I, I was surprised the other day at the grocery store, like, wow, there's whole empty sections. Like the dairy section is a hit or miss constantly. And you never know. That could be North Idaho. We're kind of at the end of everybody's delivery lines up here. But, um, but you know. It is nice. It's nice to see every step along the line where you get a little bit more resilient in your family. Yep. That's our solutions oriented approach to saying, hey, you guys buckle down a little bit, keep building systems because while well, we're not about fear and worry, 
there is reality and we want to see everybody continuing to step forward in in confidence and faith there you go that's a great way to yep. say it i really like it all righty uh, a couple questions of the week here you ready for that yep i okay. am ready i'll throw one at you okay uh donna stormer on quick and easy gut healing broth in the, in the instapot it looks like yes if you have time, could you let me know how you clean your chicken feet for cooking? Oh, okay. Cleaning the chicken feet for cooking. That's a good one because if you, I know for me, this is actually the thing that really kept me from looking into chicken feet way back at the it. beginning yeah. and not doing it for a while is because all I could picture were my chickens out in the chicken yard walking around on their feet in the muddy spring muck. Well, or in a tight chicken coops, what a lot of people tend to think of in a chicken coop that isn't well managed and is just a layer of poop. Yeah, and then taking that and putting that into the pot. And my thought was just like, that is uh, so disgusting. I don't know if I care what the health benefits are, right. honestly. And then I realized that when you are processing your chickens, you literally dunk the feet in the scalder just like the rest of the chicken and the entire outer skin of the feet pull off. If you do it correctly, it will happen automatically in the chicken plucker, if you're using a chicken mm -hmm. plucker, not doing it by hand. Um, and all the entire, even the nails are encased in an outer skin and it just whoop, right on off. It's kind of like a glove coming off and you have white squeaky clean, never touch the ground, fresh, underneath that. Besides that it gets rinsed several more times in the processing Definitely, process. it does yeah. that too. So in as soon as I understood that part, which I don't know how, I don't know if that information's not out there and floating around or if I just missed it, which is possible. I, I think more people are just seeing. When, when, when we had Sally Fallon on the summit um, and we talked about this, people freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a for new con reason. it was just a new concept for the yeah. same reason that, yeah, that you didn't absolutely. do it and bring it into the house for a long time. I didn't even know about it. Um, but it's like a lot of things. There's just a process and there are processes that you can do. Mm -hmm. And here's one where it turns something that seems like a nasty waste product into something that is super valuable and health enhancing and healing. Yeah, so. and let's talk about why that is for some of the people who are in the background going, oh my goodness, why would you want <laughs> you the chicken feet? About. What are you talking about? Um, and that is because the chicken feet contain huge amounts of collagen and gelatin in them, both of which are incre incredibly good for your entire body, um, but especially things like your skin, your gut, um, you know, some people say that that is the key to getting rid of cellulite for uh, for some of us ladies. So there's a lot of different pieces there. It's the breakdown of the collagen underneath your skin that causes cellulite. So anyways, putting that back in is a wonderful thing for your diet all the way around and your health all the way around. So that's why you would be interested. Usually that's done in the form of adding it to a long simmered broth or a bone broth and being able to get the benefits out that way, whether you're turning that broth into a gravy or a soup or just drinking it plain yep. or sauce. We've got videos on that. You've got videos on that homesteading family. Sally Fallon has a whole class on that over at the School of Traditional Skills. Um, so it's, it's worth looking into if that's a new concept for you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. So I have a question for you. Jessalie Rose on make your own compass post, make your own compost asks, can I add ash from my fire pit into my compost? So the simple answer is yes, you can. But that is a very nuanced conversation as far as getting into like how much. And um, I don't really have an answer for you. I, I'm sure somebody out there has got a very, very technical answer. You do have to be careful not to put too much in. And um, you can get too many minerals, you can get too many, um, what is it, acidity? Sorry, I'm not thinking of the details. You don't wanna to put too much in. So um, what I would recommend doing is, is one, doing some research, because I just don't have the technicals on the top of my head. 
And then two, not to get too hung up on the technicals because they can, you know, run you over, but there's some rules of thumbs out there. And you can learn to just add it in and then you're going to want to test your soil after you do it. You want to add it in your compost pile um, while it's composting, you know, and, and then put it in your soil. But you probably want to test that compost. Uh, before you use it if you're going to do that. So get some rules of thumb out there. Um, we have, and I do this, so I'm, I'm telling you from what I do, we have at this point giant compost piles because of the barns and the systems, the deep bedding that we're doing. And, but we heat the house with wood, so we have a lot. So I, I take out multiple five gallon buckets and add it to our compost regularly and it's working out fine, but I'm testing that compost every spring uh, mixing it up well, testing it before I add it to make sure that I don't have any issues. So that's kind of the boots on the ground method, but a lot of you are composting a smaller level and you may have too much ash to ratio a compost. So just try to find some rules of thumb out there if you can without getting hung up on the fine, fine nuances and go at it easy and slow and test your soil. That's what I would rec recommend doing. Um, and you'll, you'll find a method that works for you, but it's definitely an added benefit. Yeah, I think that would be alkaline, too much alkalinity. Too much alkalinity, not, not acidity. Not yes, acidity. Alkalinity, yeah. And then possibly yes. the potash might go way too yeah, high. Yeah, you get the that. potash yeah. too high. Well, and even calcium and, and a few others in there yeah. could go too high. Um, so that's where you just want to do your soil tests and make sure that your, your pH is staying balanced and, and your mineralization is staying balanced as well in your elements. Hey, but save a bucket aside of that uh, ash so that you can plant it around your... Um, your broccolis, your, your coal crops, you mm -hmm. not plant it, but put it down on the ground. It's, it saves you from a ton of pests if you just do a nice fine layer dusting. right on the ground, dusting all yep. the way around. You don't, again, you don't want to get too much in your soil, but it is, make sure you save some of that aside because it really does help with some of the pests out there. It does. And you can honestly, you can do that in all your garden in the spring if you want. You can dust with it. You know, you just need to keep your soil tests going. People, what you're going to get out there is people kind of freaking out, high, high caution. And there are reasons for caution, but I think people over respond. Maybe yeah. that's because people overuse it. So you do got to be careful. But, you know, for a long time, I was like, oh, wow, I better not do this. This is like too many, you know, too many traps. And people get a little too wound up about it too. So just kind of a balanced perspective, do a little research, go at it. And as long as you're testing what you're doing and starting small, I think you'll find uh, you know, a good way through to incorporate that into the system. Us humans have a really hard time with balance, don't we? We do. It <laughs> seems to be a ongoing piece of the story of humanity. Well, and it's, <laughs> it's, like... it's, a, it's an ongoing struggle. I mean, I get the people that get really detailed. I like things really detailed and I like to get into that stuff. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to me, but it holds you back sometimes and um, it stops you from just acting. And we need to go forward. We need to observe and learn and create a plan and act. Um, and so Joel Salatin's statement when I heard him say, you know, good enough is perfect. And so finding that balance in a lot yeah. of things helps us actually be productive on the homestead and not get hung up on some of the big detailed discussions that have validity but can get overblown and stop us from taking action. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All righty. Well, um, prepping for baby. Yeah. It's funny. I, that's a new angle on prepping. Prepping for baby. <laughs> we are <laughs> prepping. In this context. We yeah. are officially preppers over the next few weeks. Yeah. Have been. And, getting uh, ready. Yeah. Prepping for baby. And you know, I guess I'm going to go on a little soapbox you are gonna rant go on here. Okay. I am. I, you know, as I have been obviously more and more pregnant <laughs> over the last few months and looking around and, and paying attention to other people who are pregnant or have small babies, I've realized I have never in my adult life that I'm aware of seen so few babies being born hmm. and so few pregnant people. And, you know, if you look at the numbers, the demographic numbers, you actually see that that is true. It's reflected in the demographics. Right now, we're having fewer and fewer babies every single year. Occasionally, we'll have a little bump and a few more are born. Well, the United but, States is actually now falling behind. I think it's technically, it was right in there, falling behind replacement rates. We are 2.1, whatever. Yeah. I, you know, Europe's been there for a while, obviously China. 
but this is this is not good news for culture. It's kind of a different discussion, but it's not it's good not. news. Yeah, it is not good news. But I I think about why that might be, and you know, we have a lot of reasons that I hear. You know, if you read the demographic reports, if you read the things that are out there, the news articles, they're going to say, well, people are getting married later, mm -hmm. they're starting their families later, so they have fewer children, they're just not interested in having children. There's a lot of different things going on out there. But I actually have a little bit of a different take on it. And I want to kind of throw that out there because I think it really fits with who you and I are, mm -hmm. who homesteading family is, and I think who a lot of you guys are. And that is that having a baby, bringing a new life into the world is like an ultimate act of faith, hmm. really, right? It's faith in the future. It's faith in maybe a God that loves us and is watching out for us. It's faith in a lot of things. And right now we are surrounded by a oppressive amount of fear and darkness in our community, in our culture. Mm -hmm. I want to say in a much larger sense, people are scared. They're scared of the future. They're scared of what's happening. They're scared, am I going to be sick? Am I going to be able to afford children? Am I going to be able to keep them healthy and alive? Am I going to be able to provide? There's a lot of things right now that are kind of scary out in yeah. the world. And I just want to make the statement, you guys, that we don't fight fear by giving in to fear. It's just the truth. It's the same thing on the homestead. And like, yeah, we can look at all the problems in the world and we can say, oh my gosh, the food supply and oh my goodness, the this and oh my goodness, the that. And the answer is let's fill our, our basements with uh, 20 years worth of freeze dried food just in case. You know, the answer is not fighting fear by giving into fear. The answer is finding solutions and fighting fear with faith. And so I guess to me, this has just been an eye-opening moment that I really want to bring out. We have a choice about how we respond as humans to the situations around us. Are we going to let what's happening in that per pervasive feeling and maybe a little bit too much news watching or a little... You know, there's a lot of things going on. And I got to say, if I start watching the news too much, it start, you Get start going, oh, up. my goodness gracious, <laughs> this is a wreck. And we're headed for a train wreck here, you know. <laughs> yeah. But is that where we're going to live? Is yeah. that how we're going to plan our future? Is that how we're going to walk in? Let's find what the solutions are. And yeah. let's walk in faith, walking forward. And that may be meaning, let's have a baby. Well, moving forward with life, yeah, yeah, if that's, you know, if that's what you're supposed to do. And I think just to add a little bit to that, um, fear is a natural response. And so it's not that all the things you mentioned are yeah. normal, understandable fears. They're, they're things to think about. There are things to consider and there are things for each individual person to consider. But making decisions to take this past just babies at the moment, making decisions based on fear mm -hmm. and out of fear is where we get into trouble. Right. You know, the fear wakes us up. Well, so, oh, there's a problem. There's danger. What do I need to look at? Okay, here's uh, A, B, C, you know. And okay, let's consider these things. How then do we make decisions going out of that once we've recognized those things? Yeah. And then doing that in faith and um, in a lot of different ways, but just solutions oriented and where, you know, ultimately where God would have you be. Yeah. Good thoughts. Yeah. Good thoughts. <laughs> good to hear. Well, we promised a little prepping for babies. We're getting <laughs> yeah, okay. on with our rants in the show today, so we better get on to uh, a little bit of practicals, which we're always trying to give everybody Absolutely. Um, on just prepping for babies. So you've got some notes here. One is prepping on the homestead. Thoughts about that? Yeah, you know, you got to get the baby swing out in the barn and all of that stuff. Cool. <laughs> like it all right that may be the case but well, actually baby hang out with the lambs <laughs> they were, yeah we had accidental well yeah, they were no, not accidental they were, they were earlier lambs. than, than we expected yeah. lambs this week which are cute but um but yeah just in kind of exactly what we were talking about about the beginning of the pantry chat there about prepping for garden prepping for these things that Usually mom may be a little bit more involved in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a great conversation with Lacey Dixon back uh, quite a few pantry chats ago and just talking about the changing role of mom maybe on yeah. the homestead at this point of a pregnancy and, you know, getting around to delivery and um, being forethinking about that. 
and just prepping things. What is mom usually directing? What's usually going on? Making sure that there's room for mom and baby to, mm -hmm. you know, have some recovery time, yep. some slower time than that. So for us, you know, that's the garden start. That's me making plans for the card cottage garden where I'm usually involved in and making sure everybody knows how that's going to run this year. And, um, you know, kind of getting ahead and getting organized on some of those things. Yeah. So getting plans and layouts made. I know for me, because it's been a while since we've had a baby, it is in order to help with that and to make sure you get a break, it is planning to have baby with me on my body or, you know, it'd be on my body at first, but um, closer so that I, I'm, I'm bringing, I'm slowing down and bringing somebody else along um, as that's doable uh, to give you rest mm -hmm. and and help out. So that's that's that takes some thought. Like, okay, I, what do I need to you know carry the baby around and and like preparing myself mentally that I, I got to be prepared to slow down a little bit and have another little person that close to my body as I'm doing tasks um, to help make things work. Yeah. So yeah. So that's probably for me like thinking of the homestead and baby and like you know first it's like well baby's going to be with mama when it's brand new and it will be most of the time but nonetheless that's where it starts to go. And that's a different process. I've got to give myself a little more time. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Everything takes move longer. Move a little slower. <clears throat> but that's going to be really really important. Yeah. Yeah, and do you have a thought just I know you're thinking about baby carriers because sometimes for the really early stages I'm using like the big yards of cloth and the wraps yeah. and it's kind of a puzzle to get yourself in and out of are you thinking like a, a carrier type for you for well i would assume i think we used to call them was it an ergo we have ergos so yeah. might have to get one i'm a little thicker in frame these yeah. days <laughs> but um but so that's what i was figuring yeah. is that's a start and then, yeah i've been thinking i haven't been researching them too much yet because they got a little bigger where they can hold their head up before can go on my back, which is where it'll be a lot easier for me. Yeah. But I am actually even working out. Oh right, you're Start getting in shape. Lifting a few weights and do, so that I can get used to having it because I do have some lower back issues and I haven't been holding the baby and carrying it around for a while. So trying to do a few things to get in to be ready for that. So yeah, and I would assume it was uh, an Argo or something like that. Yeah. Is, have you guys have seen baby. they now have a lot of camo? Like they have men's specific right, Ergo we're gonna type get, we're carriers. Gonna get styling. Cool. I like it. <laughs> no more pink zebra stripes yeah, for right. you. Huh? No more pink <laughs> Shh, not supposed to tell anybody that. Come on. I don't even know if that's funny. <laughs> okay, All right. moving on. Prepping the house. Let's prepping. give a few, few tidbits, a few practical tidbits here about prepping the house. Meals. That's really the big one, honestly. Yeah. I mean, the rest of the house, yeah, get help where you can, enlist children, set up your household systems if you don't have them so everybody knows what chores they can be doing. Um, we've been covering that a lot in the, uh, in the membership lately, getting your daily minimum routine down so everybody knows what needs to be done in order to keep the household running on a yeah. basic level. You want to do that, but get meals put up, whether you're canning convenience meals, putting some in the freezer. Um, Buy some if you need to. I mean, of course, homemade, yeah. home preserved, good and healthy. Great. Yeah. That's what we're all trying to do, but buy some if you need to. Solicit friends. Say, hey, yeah. you guys want to do a meal train for me? Like, instead of a gift, just bring me a couple meals. And there, when people bring you meals, they're always cheesy pasta because those are easy things to transport. You might give a few, like... I could really use some healthy, you know, <laughs> more vegetables, less cheese, less pasta, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, you need to get remineralized, right? Yeah, you really do. Yeah. You really do. So you want to really focus on bone broths and those good cooked vegetables and things like that as you're recovering. Yeah. So good protein levels, things of that sort. So cool. anyways, get those meals going. Yep. That's a big one. Okay, plans for home birth. Any any practicals here? This is, well, this is our first home birth here at Riverbend. Yes. It's not your first home birth. No. So what particular things do people need to be thinking about for home birth? Or maybe even they're not a home birth. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they're going to midwife or maybe you're just traditional, going to the hospital. It's all good. What are some things to think about? You know, there's a lot of really good lists out there that you can get. And if you're working with a midwife for a home birth, they're probably going to give you their wish list. 
Um, but it's easy to think about the medical aspect, which is important, right? They'll give you a list that says you need to have this and that and the other and whatever, or they'll bring it with you. And um, it's easy to think about the baby side because kind of as soon as mom has baby, all focus all tends baby. to go to baby, right? Yeah. But make sure you're thinking about yourself too and how you're going to be able to set up your space to be able to get some rest on the other side of baby and how you can make yourself comfortable and treat yourself a little calmer. This culture, we do not um, often take the time that mom needs, which can result very strongly in some of the you know, uh, postpartum depression, long-term energy loss, hair loss, all those types of things often come from not taking care of yourself as a mom immediately postpartum. Yeah, okay. So we really, really need to take some time to create some space to rest, stay warm, stay, you know, very, very nourished and to give you the, give yourself the longest space you can to do that. So really think, you know, home birth is a great way to start that because you're right there, you're right, right. in your home space, but start giving some thought to how to prepare your space for what you need. And yeah, and if it's not a home birth, maybe it's what do you need when you get home? Yeah, you know, exactly. Which kind of ties into the next next subject here, and that is plans for recovery, which you were alluding to. Yeah, I kind of and, covered that. Yeah, and this is something we certainly didn't do well in the early years and have realized that we need to plan this in more. When I was a young mom, having the first few, I bounced back so quickly. You were like a superhero. She was just like, up and let's go. All yeah, right. I mean, oh, the family's over the next day to see the baby, so let me go get them a snack from the kitchen because I felt <laughs> good. Everybody was like, sit down. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I can be up and going. And I ended up having long-term problems with um, nursing and milk supply and different things like that, that finally, as I learned more, realized it traced right back to what I did in those first days. So even if you feel great um, or if you don't, taking that rest time is just so, so important. Do not get out of your pajamas. A midwife told me this, like <laughs> stay in your pajamas. That way, you know, and everybody around you knows you're not active. Like, <laughs> even if you feel like it, you want to get up and put your makeup on to go with your pajamas. That's fine. If it makes you feel better for photos, but stay in your pajamas and stay very, very low key. Try and stay in bed as long yeah. as you can. So what's your recovery period? What are you, um, you know? What, I am aiming goal? for about six weeks. So 40, of, 40 days, 42 days. With the first few weeks of really, like first two weeks of being really low key, really staying in bed, quiet as much as I can. Kids, everybody else can come visit me, but right. for short visits. And then after that, um, time, you know, I can start moving down to the couch and interacting a little bit more. Yeah. So try to keep it as low key as I can for about six weeks. And guys, husbands, help your wives with this. I certainly haven't been great in this in some years. And part of that was because she bounced back so well. I didn't even know. There was, <laughs> we didn't, yeah, we the needed, information's not there. We needed to be there. doing this. But um, support her in that. Help support. Get the house around that. And even grandpas, grandmas, family members, yeah. if you're around somebody, our culture's gotten all broken and we don't even think anymore. There used to be historically so many people came in and supported mom and the household. And a lot of us don't have that. We don't have extended family all around. But look at what you do have and what you can do and make sure and, and support new mom getting the rest that she needs and the baby and helping get through that season. Yeah, if you are pregnant or imminently going to have a baby or thinking about it, you can also check out the pantry chat that I did with Lacey Dixon about that. We'll put a link here somewhere. Cool. <laughs> Thank you guys. It's been good to hang out with Great. you. Hanging with you. I've got to go, but we will see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.